It's okay, Layla. Take your time. Whenever you're ready. It's not a simple yes or no. That's the point. I get there's a proper definition of the word you're using. I get there's a legal definition of what you're saying. But maybe there isn't a word for it. Which I totally get doesn't help you because you have this legal book thing that has definitions of all the bad things people can do to you. But maybe there isn't a word for this. I've not been invented yet. And now you're looking at your watch as if I'm wasting your time. And I really don't want that. But just hear me out. Please? I guess the first time where I felt it wasn't quite right was with Lukash. It's funny, really, because I never actually thought he fancied me when I first met him. He was kind of aloof with me at first, which is ironic, really, because later he told me he deliberately went a few steps close to me in that very first acting class just so he could smell my perfume. I suppose it got confirmed when a few of us went for a drink. It was such a nice day. Sun shining, great company and conversation. I just felt really happy, you know? I, I had on a play suit which had this malfunctioning button that kept popping open so you could see my tits. Everybody kept joking that at least my bra matched my lipstick. And Lukas said he'd happily sit opposite me to check if my bra opened and not inform me. I may have been totally blushed at that. I mean, when I was married, I would parade around in my Victoria's Secret underwear, holding a bottle of beer, and didn't get as much as a fat of an eyelid out of my ex-husband. My tits could have been Morris dancing around a maypole and he still wouldn't have bat an eyelid. I guess my fat face and my slow metabolism got in the way of any tit appreciation. So yeah, I did like the fact that a man was enjoying looking at my tits. I may have even subtly puffed my chest out to pop the button open. I definitely felt Lukash's eyes on me that day. We even had a cheeky shot at the bar away from the others. And yeah, I did find him attractive. We were all supposed to meet up again, but then there were these last-minute cancellations apart from me and Lukash. I did get dressed up, but that's nothing unusual. I can't really do casual now that I've actually got a bit of body confidence back. I did put on nice underwear. Don't know why. I won't lie. I had thought about having sex with him. In a way, I thought it was inevitable. We had a great dinner together. I mean, he's a really fun guy. Bags of charisma. I, I remember enjoying his company. And I did think, at which point is he going to touch me? I wanted him to touch me. I wanted him to kiss me. Yeah, I could feel your eyes on me. And then, finally it happened. I can't remember how. But it was definitely after we moved to the bar area. It was nice. I enjoyed it, what I remember of it. I guess it's hard to gauge the levels of your attractiveness when you've been out of the game for so long. He kept ordering us shots of spiced rum. And I knew it was too much because every time I kissed him after that, my head felt like it was spinning like I was on a really rocky boat and I had a serious case of seasickness. It wasn't anything serious with him. He's just a 40-year-old fuckboy. He did put me off when he told me that I was good-looking now, but that I should be careful to maintain it. He even suggested I do squats every day. I guess that would take care of my ass. I'm not sure how it would improve my face, though. I even asked him in my drunken state if he thought of me as just a piece of meat. He said he thought I was funny and smart. 
So, a gourmet piece of meat. A venison steak, maybe. The drink really flowed. Not in a comfortable way. He asked me to go back to his, but I said I'd rather go back to mine because I had a flight to Spain the next afternoon. He wasn't having it. He thought maybe it was best to leave it for another night. But then, that's when it happened. The thing we don't quite have a word for yet. We, we were outside, about to call an Uber, and he pulled me down this side bit, a sort of alleyway, I guess. He unzipped his trousers and pulled his cock out. And I don't remember exactly the details between the time of him doing that and me getting on my knees and sucking him. I know he didn't push me down, and I know I didn't feel unsafe, but that's all I know, and it doesn't seem enough somehow. I went home and he messaged me the next day and said he'd had fun and we should do it again. I even responded positively. But something kept nagging at me. Something just didn't feel right. I just don't know what triggered that feeling. And that's my problem. I never remember the details, just the feelings. I remember telling my mate that I didn't feel right about what had happened. I mean, I felt that sleeping with Lukash would happen, and I'd pull my nice underwear because clearly I was hoping he'd get to see it. But I didn't feel good about sucking his cock in an alleyway. I don't know why. I just know it wasn't my choice, but I did it. It was me. The girl wearing the nice underwear. He messaged me a few weeks later asking to meet up again. I didn't reply. Just seeing his name pop up on my screen made me feel sick. I just don't know why. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe it was the circumstances of being in the alleyway. But it's not that. It happened again with Greg. I met Greg on an app, and we matched, and, you know, there was a slight thrill to all of that at first, but I kept telling everyone that I knew I wasn't going to fancy him. It's not exactly my type. But I thought, through the message exchange, he seemed nice, and I thought maybe that's what I needed, a date with a nice man who had good text grammar. It was a sunny day, so I suggested meeting in the park. I had minimal levels of excitement because I just knew I wasn't going to fancy him. Oh, and I was right. Oh, in fact, it was worse. As soon as he approached me, I could sense this bumbling lack of confidence, which I hadn't got from his pictures. I mean, he wore a short sleeve shirt, for starters. And... You know, I was right. He was nice. Pleasant, even. I didn't feel any spark of sexual chemistry, but he was nice. Strange, really, because he worked in TV, so he had an interesting job. I mean, he's been to a This Morning Christmas party, and he's even met Scoff, and he's done a skydive. I can tell you, there's nothing skydivey about him. Even when he told me about the skydive, he relayed it like he was telling me about the time he risked medium level of Nando's rather than lemon and her. Oh, I've suddenly had a thought. I had on the same outfit as a night of Lukash. A little bit of cleavage, a lot of leg, and the same underwear. I'm not sure why. I knew I wasn't going to fancy him. I don't even know why I mentioned it. I just suddenly remembered it. I wasn't exactly having the best time, probably because there was no spark. 
but it was still early, so when he suggested to have a drink at a bar, I didn't really have an excuse to say no. There was a queue to the bar because of the temperature check stuff. The problem was, I was desperate for a wee. My flat was only five minutes away, and the bar queue was much longer than that, so I had to invite him back to mine because I'd already said I'd have a drink with him. You do see that. I mean, I couldn't just say, actually, I I'm need a wee, so I'm going home alone, when less than three minutes before, I said I'd have a drink with him. I'd really like to know what actually goes through a man's head when you invite him back. I mean, does anything go through his head? Because in my head, I thought in his head, he'd be thinking, well, something has to happen. And maybe I thought, well, something has to happen because surely you can't invite someone back so you can have a wee and then just send them on their merry way. I carried on drinking the Marks and Spencer's cocktails after I actually had a wee. 8%, you know, strong. I just thought the more relaxed I was, the more relaxed he might get. I don't know why, but I really did want to fancy him. Maybe because he was nice. It was getting late. Still no attraction. I could tell he wanted to make a move. He was edging a nanocentimetre at a time towards me over the course of the evening. Part of me just wanted to see how it would unfold. A bit like a David Attenborough documentary. Curious to see what he would do. And finally, oh, he kissed me. Oh, it was disgusting. His bottom lip was, like, shaking. Ooh. I couldn't just push him away and ask him to leave, could I? I mean, I don't know what I could have said. So I just let it happen. Because that's inevitable after you snog someone in your home. You can't just snog someone in your house and then not have sex with them because they'll think, why did you invite them back in the first place? But I didn't want to. It was horrible. I hated the feel of him. I hated him on top of me. I hated kissing him. Oh, he was sweating like a pig and it was dripping on me. Oh, when people say something makes their skin crawl, that's how I felt. Literal skin crawling. Oh. And then, after it was over, he stayed. I didn't ask him to. I didn't want him to. I didn't ask him to leave either. Instead, I had this sweaty nice man next to me on my bed. I couldn't sleep all night. I just kept waiting for morning to come. I did have a little cry in the living room. That passed the time for like 10 minutes. And then morning came and he left. I immediately stripped the bed and put the sheets in the wash. And then I washed myself. I had to get every bit of him gone. I needed to get rid of every trace. Oh. You see, there is a difference. And that's when it started dawning on me. That feeling I had in the morning was a bad kind of different. And that's how you know, I guess, that it shouldn't have happened. Not like the hinge date I had the previous week with Simon. I mean, Simon was an arrogant twat, but I still fucked him. I was absolutely fine about that. And he changed my light bulbs, actually. And I didn't give him a blowjob because he changed my light bulbs. I did it because he was six foot three and had the kind of eyes people write poetry about. I can look back on that one and delight in the memory of it. And I got light in my hallway. Ponus! Different story with Johnny from the pub. I knew when he ran out and asked for my number, he wasn't the one. But I thought he might serve a, let's say, carnal purpose. 
I already had that thought on my mind, but that shouldn't invalidate everything that happens afterwards, should it? I met up with him the night before I was due to fly to Switzerland to hike up the Alps. I told him I could only meet him that night because, well, I was flying the next day. I did get the greatest feeling about him. I mean, any guy that uses LOL when texting a girl instead of typing ha ha can't be right. Then he stopped texting altogether and left voice notes instead. He sounded drunk already. He said he didn't want to wait a week to see me, so he'd leave his cousin's barbecue to come and see me. You see, that already made me feel like I owed him something. I mean, he left a barbecue. I met up with him in the pub across the road from me. Straight away, it fell off. I hated the smell of his aftershave. Oh, it was pungent. I wore these ripped denim shorts and this corset. He made me stand up and do a twirl like I was one of those spinning elephant legs in a doner kebab shop. But he wasn't interested in me. Everything we talked about just went straight back to sex. I actually had to force myself to engage in a bit of dirty talk and pretend I enjoyed it. He even had the cheek to ask me to eat a polo. It's because he said he hated the taste of my nachos. I mean, who the fuck hates nachos? What part of guacamole, sour cream or tortilla chips is nasally offensive? I just get thinking at the back of my mind. Surely I deserve better than spending my time with this cretin. I deliberately mix my drinks so I get drunk quicker. I guess I knew I had to have sex with him. I mean, surely he'd have thought I'd let him on otherwise. He, he'd left a barbecue to come and see me. I brought him back to mine. I, I didn't want to sober up. I just wanted him to fuck me while I was still intoxicated to not feel anything. It actually was really hard to register the physical sensations of what he was doing to me because I was so put off by the things he was saying to me. He, he, it was like he was regurgitating what he'd heard in every hardcore porn film he'd ever watched, calling me whore and slut, saying, you like my white cock inside you, don't you? I just thought, what has the ethnicity of his penis got to do with anything? He told me he'd never fucked a brown girl before. I didn't tell him his white cock wasn't exactly an exotic novelty for me. I think it may have been the first time I've explicitly grimaced during sex. How dare he fetishise me? How dare I let him? But at least this time, I knew I didn't have to have him in my home for any longer. I didn't want to endure another night like I had with Sweaty Greg. I told him I had to pack for the Alps so he had to leave. Which actually was true. Night before the Alps, and I thought getting hammered with this ape takes precedence over packing. Perhaps I was a little grateful for actually having an excuse to ask him to leave, versus the real reason. He was a monumental cock. He did leave without a fuss. In fact, he said he was hungry. I asked him, surely he was stuck in the barbecue. And do you know what he said? He, he said that he hadn't eaten at the barbecue because he'd taken coke with his cousins instead. I mean, who goes to a barbecue and bypasses the food to coke themselves up? And to think I'd had barbecue MB. He left his Ray-Bans at mine. I threw them in the bin. I, I just needed to expel all trace. My friend told me I should have put them on Facebook Marketplace or something. I thought about it. I didn't think I could inflict his bad energy on anyone. I'm not 
saying these men need to be locked up. I'm just saying maybe there needs to be something which spells out clearly when you really do want to do it. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here now, but maybe there needs to be a word like, I don't know, unicorn or something. And if you don't hear someone say that word, you're not allowed to go anywhere near them. Why didn't I just say no? Yeah, you're right. I mean, these men were awful, but they're not like the sick animals you get. If I'd said no, they probably would have backed off. But I didn't. I couldn't. And I'm leaving here with a better understanding of what my standards are. And that it's okay to say no. I've had to hit rock bottom to actually learn that. I'm still not sure that I will always be in a position to be able to say yes. And that's what scares me, terrifies me. <laughs>